The story of Bungie begins deep in the Swedish countryside, in the tiny fishing village of Askersund, where the farmers would gather each... Askersund! I'll put my boot in your Askersund! Now listen up! Bungie starts here! Sweet Home Chicago, 1991! That year I was taking an artificial intelligence class, and Jason was in that class. I was working on a game, and Alex was trying to start a company. Where Jason is actually a lot like a shipboard AI, where most of the time it does miraculous work that nobody else could do, and then the other times it's, you know, crazy. This is what I think of the Computer Game Developers Conference. <laughs> you know, we just got to talking and uh, thought maybe we should try partnering up. And I finished that first game for the company that became Bungie. Two guys come up with a manifesto. Seven steps to world domination. They were uh, handed down from on high. They came from Providence. Seven steps to world domination. Because that's the best number. It's like rock. Nothing beats rock or seven. Seven steps? I've only been here six years. They don't trust you overnight. If I could just run more than seven steps, I think yeah. we'll start there, <laughs> and then we'll see where we go. Yes, yeah, start independent gaming company. Does the, does, is, there, is there an addendum that says uh, remain independent? Because we should, we should have put that in there. Bungie Studios started properly in 1991. We tried it out and it worked really good. We just kept going. Every time you eat a piece of pizza, you have to cross something off. Right? But it was kind of like, you know, being in a band because uh, it was our lives, you know, 24 seven. We didn't have any idea what we were really doing. I think Tunster needs to get the shaft. <laughs> There are a variety of ways one can get the shaft. Getting rid of the shaft, that's a, that's a trickier proposition. Every two weeks, someone's gonna get the shaft. So, Harold, you are the driver of the shaft for the next two weeks. Well, the name Bungie is actually a very dirty, dirty joke. Well, it's a punchline of a very dirty joke, which I'm afraid I can't reveal. You know, I can't talk about why the company's called Bungie. That's top secret stuff. The original Bungie offices, which you can see across the street, brown brick building there. We occupied the second floor. It had character. This is where we would eat our burritos, probably four out of five days of the week. This building used to be the bug stop. It was like open 24 hours or something. And there was that crack house behind the building. Some guys come running up to the car side door and we're like, what the hell's going on here? And he holds up his trash bag. And he's like, come on, buy some porn, buy some porn. And we're like, uh, no thanks. That was sort of the ambiance of the neighborhood in the, in the old place, it was awesome. So let's just say the step two, is immensely destructive. Bungie grew up making games for the Mac. Hello! I think I had pretty modest ambitions at the time and uh, didn't come close to achieving them the first time out of the gate or the second time. But we stuck with it and we ended up with Pathways. <laughs> I had some friends that used to play Pathways in the darkness all the time. Which was our first, uh, I would say, successful game you know, that made a profit and we were able to start hiring some people to help us out. Uh, first Bungie game I ever heard of was Marathon. Let's just say that it's a grand galactic space opera with mystical overtones. That was the first first person shooter on the Macintosh where you could connect with other friends and actually play head to head. Whoa, you guys! <laughs> so how close is Marathon at this point? Well, uh, we ship by August Mac World 97. <laughs> we'll all be really happy. Yeah, Marathon was our breakout project, really. A lot of people really liked the game. Marathon made me dizzy. I think at that time, honestly, Mac owners would have been excited by Space Invaders in a tube. One of the first games I ever played where I really got a sense of a community around an actual game was Myth. We developed it for the Mac and the PC at the same time. Myth is a real-time strategy. But it's much more like an arcade game. You use the terrain to your advantage, which isn't something that a whole lot of games did at the time. It was all about the quick combat and micromanagement of troops. It was a lot of fun. The ability to play multiplayer against strangers and friends has been a foundation for other things that we've gone on to do really well. The game Phoenix was what we worked on after Myth 2. It was called Phoenix because that's what kind of rose out of the ashes of the Myth 2 project. It was still in that same sort of medieval kind of magical time frame. We worked on a number of different giant medieval style weapons like big catapults and trebuchets. Lots of magic, lots of sword play. You went around as a big minotaur with an axe and beat the crap out of skeletons. There were a bunch of very fun components to it 
But Phoenix never really caught fire. You would play with it and you would go, well, this is like maybe five minutes of fun and after that it's just not fun anymore. So you would scrap that and then you would just move on to the next thing. Uh, without further ado, let me go back to Peter, who has managed to rustle up a fan who I hear has a uh, pretty stupid trick for us. We got into the world of television with Bungie TV largely thanks to the ego and ability of Joseph Staten. Oh, he's got a leg in. He's down. He's, he's in. Oh. Jeff is in. <laughs> Jeff is in the can. I was back in the day before the Internet's tubes were big enough to shove all the things through. So. We've been putting together a tour of the Oni facilities. Uh, here we have the Bungie West parking lot, the central portion of the Bungie offices. This looks like a paperwork disaster. The entertainment area, which is a little messy. The West Coast office of Bungie started with Oni, which was a third person shooter. We called it full contact action. The Matrix had just come out and that was really uh, sort of a big influence on the animation. The main character for Oni is Kanoko. She's strong but vulnerable. Just something to pique that sense of chivalry that is like really undeveloped in the hearts of young men. <laughs> step three, you cut a hole in a box. Some people think that's step one, but to me it's step three. Yeah, nothing says killer, hardcore, rough and tumble like Halo. <laughs> Paul Russell is the father of Halo. <laughs> I came up with, uh, with the name Halo, and it was not received well. Jason was leaning more towards Redshift. Covenant was one of them. I thought it sounded like a, like a bad 80s hair band. You know, Covenant. Halo is an epic journey to save humanity from a terrible menace. That's all it is. That's good. They should put that on the box. <laughs> it was gonna be really important to Microsoft to have games for the Xbox. That's what was gonna make or break it. We got very excited about the opportunity to be a, a launch game on a platform. I remember seeing just a single texture on a wall with a flashlight going, wow, this is gonna be awesome. And it was way before the Xbox even looked like the Xbox and way before Halo even looked like Halo. That's the first version of uh, the Warthog, I guess, huh? Yeah. Man, this isn't Halo, dude. Man, this is really, really old. <laughs> we had a huge map for a continuous RPG game, and before that we like had an RTS, and then it, next thing you know, it was a third person, and we were playing it in our office. People yeah. probably really? want to know why we switched from third person to first person. Jason again. Yeah, it's all this oh, damn Jason. Man. Man. <laughs> That's what happens when your lead is a crack addict. Oh dang. <laughs> yeah, Halo depended on a lot of that early wandering, and we never really knew how people were going to receive it. Like six months before we shipped, we went to E3 with a build of the game and nobody liked it. You know, people played it and they're like, oh, the frame rate's not so good. Well, what's all this hype, Halo? Good luck, Master Chief. Evolving over a long period of time, Halo's turned into something much bigger than a video game. Because we're creating a world. You can't open you know, history books and whatnot to read about Halo. This is a world that's been created. And this progress attracted the attention of someone who in many respects, was all that we aspired to be. Did we let this attention go to our heads? No, we did not. And little did we know it, but Bungie was on the auction block, and we all of us soon found ourselves strangers in a strange land. <laughs> When Microsoft bought us, some people were totally incensed because they grew up from the Mac side of things and felt like, you know, this was a sellout. Greed, pure and simple, cashed it in, sold our souls. A lot of the team was pretty young and didn't have a lot of attachments, um, so the opportunity to go somewhere new was pretty exciting. I think for some of us, myself included, uh, with family in Chicago, it was uh, maybe a little bit more bittersweet. <laughs> We got on a plane, we came out here, and we haven't we really looked back, you know. We were expecting a final sales number to be 700,000 units, and then it just went through the roof. Why? Because of my pretty, pretty face. Hoorah! Step four didn't really go very well. Which one was step four? Which one's step four? Do you know what step four is? Right, we got to get a picture of the uh, bungee food. I know back in the day in Chicago, there was a very infamous Chinese food we, the restaurant we used to order from. They used to just deliver us crazy amounts of Chinese food all the time. <laughs> What's this crap? <laughs> that looks good. Ming Choi is the one place that you can get roasted chicken, pizza, and barbecued pork fried rice 
all delivered within 20 minutes. I don't think that really accelerated the process development, uh, development so much as it sort of filled it with a lot of bathroom breaks. Because Halo 1 happened really big, I don't think there's any doubt that there wasn't going to be a Halo 2. We're like, we should do another one, you know, because we're out of margaritas and, you know, they're expensive. I'm going to need more. And Halo 2 is moving. Time begins to crawl. But we're still not telling if we'll ship this fall. Maybe Bungie needs to see. Bet you can't stick it. You're on. Halo 2 led us to step five of our plan for world domination. We were supposed to get the orbital defense station. Uh, that was step five. I forget step five. But Microsoft said that if they're going to build an orbital space station, that it's going to be running Windows, and we didn't want to be going up there. Oh, it's been recovered. We're trying to move on to giving it away. Ling Ling is a severed dog's head. <laughs> in a jar. <laughs> One of the guys from the Chicago office had a roommate who was a medical student, and he brought Ling Ling home as homework. He moved out and left Ling Ling behind, and she's been here ever since. Of all the Chicago traditions we should have left behind. The last thing you want to see when you pop open your closet is a severed dog's head. Other people just run away or barf, but Ling Ling's head, if you have faith, it's going to help us dominate. If you want to dominate, <laughs> try this puppy. There were a lot of reasons that it was important for us to move to another building. One is that Bungie is all about having its own identity. It was because of the parking, man. I mean, now they have valets, so maybe that would have changed things. A lot of people just felt like we were just part of the Borg. There's definitely a great deal of love between Bungie and Microsoft. And when Microsoft hits us, it's because it loves us. They made us walk like 200 yards to the bathroom. Being in this sort of stale uh, cube farm type environment isn't very conducive to being creative. Like Matt Noguchi would sprint all the way to the bathroom and just barely make it. I mean, barely. Like That's why there's this big puddle of piss in front of the urinals. I think the main reason we moved is we just got bigger. I don't know, forget how many people we had on Halo 1, maybe 40-ish. And apparently we've got 200 people in the building now. I mean, we're just, we're huge. The new place is a lot more like, I think my, when my dad came to visit, he was like, oh my god, this place looks like the set of 24 or something. It's like a fortress of solitude right next to a Starbucks. Well, it is a little dark. I, a cave is a good description for it. The interior is like a big, giant open pit. We like the big open office environment because we, we think that communication is very important. This is the Bungie coat of arms. Basically, the Latin says, uh, don't make us kick your ass. All I got to say is um, we're on Halo three right now that's all hey, halo three has been pretty much freaking awesome from the beginning crazy fool why do you always jump this is humanity's final stand here at earth halo has a life of its own and it lives and breathes and consumes everything in its path Step seven had something to do with getting more women to work at the company, but that's not going so high. I'm actively working on number seven every day, laying out my schemes, my plans. You're either an ally or an enemy, so you must choose a side. Because when you get to seven, someone's got to do it. On that final day, when our enemies find themselves all standing together on a giant cargo net, on a highly sprung giant mechanism waiting to be hurled into the sun, they will look to themselves and say, this agenda has been posted publicly on Bungie Net for seven years and we paid no attention. If only we'd looked. 10 years into the future, it's hard to imagine. Wow, 10 years in the future. Where's this whole thing going? Not making Halo games. <laughs> After Halo 3 ships, uh, it's going to be an interesting time for us. My fear is that we make the greatest game in the world and nobody buys it. It's all about where's the candy and where's the death. I want the candy. I don't want the death. So I think in 10 years, 
Games are going to be a lot more fun. I'm trying to recreate some of that wandering we did at the beginning of Halo 1 and we did at the beginning of Pathways. Keeping everyone super motivated, hoping that we're going to create something beautiful. Hopefully Chucky won't be clipping his toenails in the middle of the... In the middle of the meeting room. Ten years in the future, I just want to be making games. Ha! Talk to me after the next trilogy! I'm going to be in there, right? <laughs>